Hi, I'm Heidi Brockmeyer, and I'm going to tell you the signs of implantation and pregnancy and what you can do next. So there are the obvious signs, like missing your period and getting a positive pregnancy test. But before you can even test if you're pregnant, you're probably wondering, am I pregnant? What are the signs? Well, many of the signs can feel similar to before you get your period, like breast tenderness and crampiness in the low abdomen and low back pain. One of the most common signs that I see with the women that I help is increased thirst and urination. You may also feel warmer because of the progesterone levels and the hormones that are now circulating through your body to support the pregnancy. You also find that it's a little tougher to sleep and you have a little insomnia. You have this new life force growing inside of you, so this can cause some restlessness. You may also feel some pressure in the low abdomen and some twinges. Your breasts may be heavier and swollen and tender. And if you never get breast tenderness before your period, then this could be a good sign. Also, same thing with low back pain. If you never feel low back pain before your period or you never feel cramps before your period, that could be an indication of pregnancy. You may find that you have an increased appetite to support this new life force. And you may have some implantation spotting. Implantation spotting usually happens within five to 10 days after fertilization and ovulation would occur. Usually you get a little bit of spotting, it's very light, and then it goes away and you don't have spotting for several days. If you're somebody that has spotting quite frequently up until your period, then that might be hard to discern if it was implantation spotting or spotting that you normally get before your period. And on a side note, some spotting is normal when you do have pregnancy. It's not ideal and it can be very scary, but it doesn't always mean that you're miscarrying. You may also, if you're keeping a basal body temperature chart, find that your temperatures go to an even higher level. Your temperatures are higher after ovulation, and then oftentimes with pregnancy, they go to an even higher level than that. That doesn't always happen, but that could be a sign if you see that. You may also not feel any symptoms. I've had plenty of women who didn't feel anything at all, and they didn't think there could be any way that they were pregnant. Then they got a positive test. Usually the nausea and the food aversion doesn't really set in until about six or seven weeks into the pregnancy. It's oftentimes not one of the first symptoms, but it can come pretty early on for some women. That's the same thing with fatigue. Usually the fatigue comes in a little bit later, but some women do feel tired right away. So now what do you do if you're pregnant and you want to make sure you stay pregnant? Well, in Chinese medicine, we say that it's really important to keep your uterus warm. Of course, if there's a little embryo in there, it doesn't want to be cold. It wants to be nice and warm and cozy. So you do this by making sure you keep your feet warm, your abdomen warm, and your low back warm. Now, this doesn't mean you should put a heating pad over your low abdomen. When you know that you're pregnant, it's actually advised to not put a heating pad over your low abdomen. But make sure that your low abdomen are covered and your low back is covered and doesn't get chilly and that you're wearing warm, cozy socks around the house and that you're not out gallivanting with flip-flops on. You also want to keep your digestion warm, as we say in Chinese medicine. So eat warm foods, cooked vegetables, and easily digestible foods like soups and stews. Eat healthy. Avoid sugar binges and binging on refined carbohydrates and binging on dairy. The stronger your digestion is, the stronger the pregnancy will be. Make sure you eat regular meals and make sure you eat a daily breakfast. Don't skip breakfast. I recommend that the breakfast is warm and I recommend that you have protein with breakfast and that you have protein with every meal. Protein is going to help to sustain your energy levels, ward off the nausea once it does set in, and it's also really going to help support the pregnancy and building all of these new cells. When it comes to exercise, avoid downbearing exercises like heavy lifting and avoid high impact exercises like jogging. You also want to avoid excessive sweating. You need those fluids for the pregnancy, but don't be afraid to move at all. I recommend like brisk walks and gentle stretching, easy yoga classes. Now, if you have spotting or if you had an in vitro cycle, and this is how you might be pregnant, or you, if you do have a history of miscarriage and therefore your pregnancy might be a little more vulnerable than the average pregnancy, then it might be a good idea to avoid sex for at least until you see a heartbeat, if not through the first trimester. This would be a good topic to discuss with your doctor and see what they recommend.
Make sure you're getting plenty of sleep, at least eight hours a night. You're going to need it. And, uh, you know, if you're not pregnant, if it's not this month, or if, God forbid, you miscarry, I want you to know that there are, are things that you can do and that preparation is key. There are so many tools that you can do to really till the soils and prepare your body so it's very fertile and uh, so that you're not likely to miscarry. Uh, preventing miscarriage is all in the preparation before you get pregnant, not once you get pregnant. There are things that you can do to support the pregnancy, as I just mentioned, but what's most important is that you prepare before you get pregnant. These are tools and the principles that I teach in my program Total Fertility Wellness, as well as my free online resources and in many of my videos. So if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, then you probably want to because I offer a lot of tools and uh, tips for preparing for a healthy pregnancy. In fact, one of those is self-acupressure. That is my favorite tool and there, you can sign up and on the link on this video for a free introductory self-acupressure video. That's wonderful if you are pregnant and also wonderful if you want to improve your fertility to get pregnant. And in fact, there's a point in there, it's called pericardium six and it's on the wrist. And this is a great point to ward off nausea if you are pregnant. So this protocol will help you to balance your hormones and increase circulation to your reproductive organs. And it's very easy and very relaxing and safe. So feel free to sign up for that. And please, Leave a comment below. Let me know what your questions are, what your thoughts are, what signs you may have of being pregnant. If you are pregnant, I want to hear it.